The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Okay. Good morning, folks. My name's Jack Alsop. Um, just quickly, if somebody wouldn't mind typing in the in the questions area, make sure you can see and hear the presentation all right. We've had some issues just recently. I just want to make sure that somebody, all good, excellent, can see. Yep, beauty. Thank you, guys. That'll do me. Okay. Um, just going to allow for one more minute to allow others to come in and then I will set the scene for what we're trying to achieve today. We'll try to be as in-depth and with a bit of luck cover 99% of your questions. If you have other questions, I will ask that those questions, type them in by all means, but I will not answer them until the end of the session when I'm, I think I've finished presenting the information. Okay? Um, and if anybody's asking about the, the previous deep dives, as soon as I can get into Sydney, we just get them tidied up. Um, be a couple of weeks away now. Uh, we will get them up on YouTube so that everybody else can get hold of them from there and you know, have a look at the previous ones. Uh, if there's still questions, then obviously get to your account managers and if needed, um, the account managers will get hold of the appropriate support and or technical services person to uh, individually give you a call, perhaps step through your issues for you. Okay. I think it's close enough, guys. We're going to start. All right. Today's Head Start Restore webinar is all about the automated process. A lot of people get extremely confused about what we can do and what we can't do. So I'd like to clarify up front what we can do, how you do it, and what are some of the technical guidelines that you need to keep in, in the back of your mind, okay? So first thing I'm going to do is open up my image manager uh, installation, okay? Uh, that is my laptop, folks, with um, its four drives being backed up. Here's the machine I'm backing up for today. It's just a 2008 R2 machine. Um, it is not UEFI, it is MBR. So we're going to be able to deal with a few bits and pieces, okay? Now, what are we going to push to? The whole Head Start Restore thing is all about VMDK, which is suitable for ESX. We also have the ability to push VHD, VHDX, and volume. And this is where for the Microsoft people, it gets really damn confusing, okay? I want to eliminate that confusion today and show you the ways you can do the bits and pieces, okay? So the first trick here is, folks, I've also got a, an ESX machine sitting over here, okay? Uh, it's not doing anything at the moment. The two guests that are on there, it's a little training laptop that I use, folks, but it's perfectly good for what we're trying to achieve today. Um, there are a couple of training uh, servers that I use, both turned off, and for that sake, I'll then just close that down so you do know that it exists. Um, this machine here is a 2008 R2 machine that I'm backing up that we're going to use to push somewhere. Um, the other machine I have is this particular machine. It's one of my servers sitting here in, in Brisbane. It's not the most powerful thing in the wild world, but you know who really cares? It's, we're not interested in power. We're interested in process. Okay, it's just me. It has to satisfy. No, there's no other users in, in the Brisbane office. It does have currently one guest running on it. Um, it's called WUS. Don't think it's a Windows Update Server. It is actually a 2008R2 domain controller, and I call it WUS for Wimpy because it hasn't got a lot of resources, and I just want to see how how the effect of running on a machine without a lot of resources has on that particular machine. The actual guest doesn't seem to have a lot of problems, but the host has the occasional problem. 
but I've used this as a Hyper-V box because I've got a little test one set up here which we'll go into in a few minutes and discuss the situation, okay? So I will be jumping between a few bits and pieces, folks, and that's okay. Um, I will explain where I'm going and all of that as we go through the process. So to start the ball off, I am going to do obviously the, the, the easier one at this point, easier in terms of technically, okay, not in terms of um, uh, what's involved or anything like that. It's just the simplest one to set up and get it rocking and rolling, okay. So we're going to look at this particular machine, folks, and if I open up the Shadow Protect structure, look at the disk map, it's a single disk broken up with a C drive and a data drive. Yes. Not a lot of data on it, and I don't really care what data is on the damn thing because it's not not relevant today. The system reserve partition, so I know it is a standard build of uh, 2008 R2. It is not a UEFI machine, but that's cool. We then go in here and we just have a quick look at any one of those two jobs. I don't care which one you want to have a look at, but they're both basically the same. Uh, the C drive backs up every 15 minutes from 6 o'clock in the morning to 6 o'clock at night. The E drive does exactly the same thing every 15 minutes between 6.03 and 6.03. So yeah, we're cool and comfortable with that. We'll minimise that out and it's being put into this particular directory so there are six files there at the moment. So what I'm going to do is the first one which is purely and simply, I'm going to push it across to ESX just so you get an understanding, okay? Now there are uh, points here that I will go through as we go along. Um, so that people are well and truly aware of where they stand, okay? All right, fully automated process here in terms of creating and restoring the disk, okay? You still have to do a hardware independent restore and a few other bits and pieces, depending upon where it's coming from, where it's going to. You still have to do some of those things, but let's just get through it. Okay, I'm going to start a brand new Head Start Restore job. I am going to use VMDK and I'm going to pick my location, okay? There's nothing fancy about these locations, folks. All right, they're just purely and simply done a little Toshiba notebook or laptop. It's, that's its IP address. I'm logging in as root with the appropriate password and I'm done and dusted, okay? Subdirectory, okay, is blank. You don't need it. What, however, is important is the lag time. Now, why do most people do what's called a head start restore? What is a head, head start restore? Okay, maybe it's a question we should have started with. However, a head start restore is a getting a head start to your restore. So let me start doing a restore a long time before I actually need it. I can use this for migration purposes. This particular machine could have been a physical machine and I want to migrate it across into ESX or Hyper-V. Okay, it's a manual, this is an automated process. It could have been um, production site and over in the disaster recovery site, I'm starting to push them into ESX boxes in case production site disappears under 15 feet of mud, um, a wall of flames, whatever else strikes us in Australia these days. We cop it from every which angle these days apparently. Um, last week we had a little bit of a cyclone come through Sydney, uh, Brisbane, sorry. So lag time, folks, is very, very important. If it's purely and simply for disaster recovery, be a one hour behind. And if you think about one hour behind, this machine is doing four incrementals per hour, so therefore it's going to be a little bit behind the times with four incrementals. However, if you're doing it for data integrity purposes for disaster recovery, an awful lot of people punch this number out to about 22, okay? Why 22 hours? Well, it might take the database administrator, it might take the exchange administrator, it might take the system administrator to realise, geez, that bloody file server's RAID controller started to die about four or five hours ago. And if he starts trying to finalise, he's going to end up in all sorts of grief, major sorts of grief. Yeah? So 
somebody corrupted the databases because they pressed the wrong button. Some DBA pulled out the wrong table, screwed the thing over. So a lot of people go back quite a few hours, okay? But for today's exercise, I am purely and simply going to do um, a migration. So I'll leave it at one. All right. The next thing, obviously, and I click on Head Start Restore Volumes, I go, yes, please. Okay, and there are two of them, the C drive and the E drive. You go, yep, that's cool. Notice the lock on them. They are password protected. So we simply type in the password. And we go OK. It helps if both of those backups have the same password for obvious reasons. OK. Now, here it says click to browse for volume. What we're now going to do is go across the network and look for our ESX box, okay? And I'll wait for the next screen to come up before I comment too much further. All right, people need to understand this from an ESX perspective. In ESX, the four series, you could point directly to your vSphere server, your, your central server, and it would list all of the ESX hosts, and away you go. Okay, in ESX5, uh, with the vSphere center server in that particular machine, there has been a small issue with the current version of um, Image Manager. It is fixed in the beta release that I can get hold of at the moment, uh, soon to be released, where you can still do the same thing. But in ESX5 at the moment, you need to pick the specific host, okay? So in this case, I'm going to pick that host. And you'll notice when I pick the host, it highlights this little button down here. Create a new empty virtual machine within the selected host or resource pool. Perfect. So here I'm going to uh, create this brand new machine. And I'm just going to call it um, A uh, Win. Sorry. I'll use the same name, win2k8-ent, that actually helps if you can spell, Jack, dash, well, oh, good grief, wrong day to day, folks, SA, okay? I'm just going to put the A on there because it's an automated one, all right? If there are multiple data stores, you obviously pick the data store you want to use, but in this instance, I've just got a little single SATA hard drive in there, pick the data store and I go create, okay? It creates it. Now you'll notice this is grayed out, but it now allows me to create an empty disk. Great, let's create the disk. And the reason I go through all of this, folks, is, is you need to let the wizard create these disks, and I'll give you the explanation in two minutes. This is the C drive. You'll notice the disk size. That disk size is actually larger than what I actually need. We need a little bit of extra space to be able to create the um, area to store some information about what part of the disk we've restored and what incremental we're up to and stuff like that. So you just simply go create and you go select. All right, so that one's now selected. I need to select this one. Okay, this time I don't have to create the machine because I know it's there. Highlight the machine and I you know it's pretty bad when you can't remember. E drive, perfect. Go and create. E dash drive, call them what you like. I just try to make it fairly simple so that people can see what I'm doing. We'll highlight that and we'll go save and we'll go save. And that's it, okay? It'll start now pushing those files across and it will get to the stage when it says restored. And it will go no further until, you know, there's four more files there, so it'll take the, the, the oldest one, stick it in, and it'll just keep gradually restoring away. Now, while that's happening, folks, I will open this back up so you can see exactly what's happened at the other end and we'll then deal with um, Hive-V. Yes, I'm always ignoring that certificate. I don't want to include it in anything. I don't want to add it into anything. 
it changes quite a bit. So here it is, it's created that machine, folks, and let's have a look at the virtual machine settings, okay? You know it's a 2008 R2 machine, right? Okay, memory, bit light on, so let's just give it two. CPUs, again, that's a bit light on, let's give it two. Uh, SCSI controller is LSI Logic Parallel. Mm. Give me that one, please. Hard disk one, okay. Thinly provisioned, no performance impact whatsoever in, in, high, in uh, ESX, so guys, let's not worry about them. Thinly provisioned, way to go. However, this machine has, is going to need a hardware independent restore, so we're going to boot off a recovery CD. The recovery CD I already have copied up to this machine. It's an old one, folks, but still a good one, so I'll just go OK. And I make sure it's connected at power on. The network adapter, who really cares? Okay, it'll soon sort it out when I put the appropriate tools in place. Okay, we now go to options. All right, the only one here that I really want to make sure of is it must boot to the BIOS the next boot. Okay, so we've now set that all up and basically we can leave it all alone. It's just going to do its job. It's already restored the E drive. It's now going to do the C drive. Um, if I go into here, folks, we go to configuration. We go to storage. We go browse the data store. Okay, here it is here. And if you want to press, you know, refresh or this button here, you'll watch these things actually grow. Okay? So I'm not going to watch them grow. All right, I'm going to pick on the alien, okay? The data partition of my alien, folks, um, well, if you just look on here, yeah, the data partition is, you know, like 350 gig out of, you know, 870, 330 out of 900. So I'm going to use the G drive. <coughs> Pardon me. I could quite simply do this. Add a new head start restore job. This. And this time I'm going to pick VHD. And this time I'm going to pick, it will be a network drive. I already have it set up. The subdirectory I want you to use is this one. Okay. Again, the lag time. All right. Because my Hyper-V machine is over on the gateway server, this particular server, and I can go head start restore volumes, add the volumes. Okay. Now I'm going to unselect them all here because you know it's a process that I'm trying to get across, not anything else. These are not password protected, so we simply go there and I don't like, you know, that, so I'm just going to change that to that. Okay? And I can go save. And it'll just start when it's ready, pushing it across. Now, if I go and change this in agent settings, we need to up the performance here a little bit. Folks, just bear with me. Um, we need to probably go for that limit. Okay, give it a minute. I'll just start pushing them across. All right, now, one important point here, folks. Okay, this particular machine, my laptop is Windows 8.1 machine. It is not under any circumstances using the disk, it's using original 512 disks. But I am going to ask you some questions. So, well, I'm going to ask the questions, but I'm also going to tell you. The fundamental difference between a VHD and a VHDX, and people are going to tell you, oh, that's on Hyper-V 2012R2 and and allows me to go past two terabytes and VHD is the earlier version and um, limited to two terabytes. All good answers, but for us, it's not the damn answer we need. Why is it not the damn answer we need? You need to know beyond a shadow of a doubt what the damn server came from, okay? For example, I have seen people 
try to push automatically or manually a 2008 R2 machine into a VHDX and then say it won't boot. Doesn't matter what you do, it sort of comes up, looks at you for five minutes and then falls apart and shuts down. Okay? There's going to be a heap of questions around this one. I'm simply going to say to you this one fact. The only difference that I am concerned about with VHDs and VHDXs is the sector size in a VHD is 512 bytes. The sector size in a VHDX, in the other hand, okay, is 4K. You cannot put a 2008R2 into a VHDX. It will just fail like a mongrel dog. Just fall over. It will not work, folks. You've got to think about what it is you're trying to achieve. Now, this Windows 8 box, because it's sitting on SSD hard drives, I know are 5, 12 byte sectors, therefore I selected VHD. But there's still another problem in this screen that you need to be aware of. Both of these are limited to 2 terabyte hard drives, so how the hell do I get to a 4 terabyte, 16 terabyte hard drive? Okay, that's a bit of a concern for us, isn't it? How the heck do I do this? Aren't you understand the difference? 512, 4K sectors, that part of it, they're still limited to 2 terabytes. How the heck do I get to this other thing? Simple way, it's not complex at all. What I did is I went across to my Windows 2012, it's not an R2 box, but it's a 2012 box. I created the appropriate machine Okay, now I do not, do not ever intend to boot this thing, folks. It's a process that I want to show you. But if I look at this particular machine, um, okay, you can see how, how poor this machine's running already, folks, and that's cool. It is pathetically slow. I've got this test for terabyte VHDX file, yes? And basically, folks, it is a four terabyte disk, thinly provisioned. I could blow it away and show it to you again, but there it is there. There's nothing in it. It's a blank disk. It's a VHDX file built on the 2012 box. So you're now asking me, how the hell do I push into it? How do I automatically push into that thing? Okay, it's quite simple. What I'm going to do is start off another Head Start Restore job, and this is for something completely different. Okay, I can't do it, not yet. I have to go down here to Computer Management, all right? This is one of the nice features of the newer versions of Windows, the ability to be able to do this. So here it says to me Disk Management, I'm going to go Attach a VHD. And it says, where the hell do I find this VHD? So I go for a browse. Okay, you can see I've already done it this morning, but I've gone across to the E drive, the Hyper-V machines, and I go to here, and I pick that VHDX file, and I go open. And I don't want to read only, so I go OK. The source machine here has to understand the VHDX format as well, okay? Because it'll just mount it. Next thing I do is I'm going to initialize the disk. Yes, yes, yes. What as? Well, it's four terabytes, folks. I'm going to have to make it a GPT. It goes, okay, let's do it as a GPT. All right, it's now online. I go right click, new simple volume, next, next, sign an appropriate drive letter to it. So I'm going to call it the R drive for a restore drive at this point in time. I'm going to go next. Uh, file systems, definitely NTFS allocation, yeah, default. Well, it's going to be 4K. All right. Don't confuse sectors with clusters here, folks. Call it whatever you want to call it. So we'll just call it uh, data um, VHDX, just so it's different. And we go next. Then we go finished. Okay. Of 
like I said, this gateway server, folks, is pretty poor in terms of performance, but uh, that's the easiest way for me to find out that you know something's going to break is when I've got really poor performance for when I do a lot of testing. So you can see here, this thing's now going to format, okay? And it'll take a couple of minutes, a couple of seconds. All right, so it will come through good in a minute, okay? I'm going to add a new Head Start Restore job just to slow the whole thing down. And this particular time, because I want to restore, say, my big data drive, okay, I am going to, say, push it to a volume, okay? Notice it loses all of this. I still get lag time, but I don't get anything here. So I go Head Start Restore Volumes, add a volume, okay? And I'm just going to take out all these other ones here. I'm just going to leave the G drive at this point. So I'll take out the E drive and I'll take out the C drive. The assumption is that was the backup of, you know, a fairly large drive over on uh, a server somewhere else. Password protected, absolutely. Just do that. It now asks you for which one. Okay. Now you'll see here that at this point in time, it hasn't completed Okay, so I am going to have to go cancel, and I think I will have to probably pause this job for a moment. Okay, there you go. Now she's healthy, and it's the hard drive. So I'll go back over here, folks. I'll put kick that job back off again in a moment, but here I'm just going to go add a head start restore. This time, volume. All of this disappears. We go down here, we select, and we take out these other ones because we're only particularly interested in this very large volume that we've got, 4 terabytes, 18 terabytes, whatever the case might be. That's the one we want. We go OK. Select where we're going to pump it to. OK. And there it is, that 40 terabyte disk. And we just go Save. And it'll just start pumping the G drive into that machine. I can actually release this job here and allow it to continue on doing what it wants to do. And away we go. Okay. So if I go over to the gateway machine, in particular here, okay, and highlight that, hit F5, you can see that it's growing. Yes. All right. If I go down to here, and I go the alien laptop one, you can see how far the VHD's got. Okay? So I can release that job and it'll just continue on doing its job as well. Okay? So I will release that. And it'll just poke away. Poor old gateway server over here. If I sort of look at uh, task manager, it's all running slow, folks. And we understand it's running slow because it's not a real good machine. Okay, it's receiving at 350-odd megabits a second, okay? Those two hard drives will continue to grow until such time as, you know, they are the appropriate size. Okay, so the things that I think people should be well and truly aware of by now, VMDK is obviously... ESX, okay, ESX compatible, ESXi compatible, VHD is uh, 2008 R2 and earlier, uh, VHDX is 2012 R2, obviously, uh, 5, 12 byte sectors, VHDX, 4K sectors, do not try to store, restore a 2008 machine to one of these, it just won't work, okay, and then volume is the way that you can now utilize to get around the limit that we have of two terabyte hard drives, okay? Both of these still have a limit of two terabyte hard drives. Working on improving that, but volume is the quickest and simplest way. Why does the volume structure work? Folks, because I'm using SMB3 on my Windows 8 machine and SMB3 over on the Windows 
2012 machine and you can see the process would be nice if they put a little number in here to say I'm 10%, 15% but it's restoring it, okay? Um, poor old hard drive's a little busy at the moment folks, it's just poking away. You can see here for the ESX one that the process is basically finished. Okay, it is, and you can see there are eight files, but it's restored two files. Okay, the base on both of them. All right, so for the sake of the argument, we're going to say let us finalize. Okay, the process of finalizing is finishing off those disks. So we basically now go, and I don't care whether we're using, you know, these ones or I'm using this one. Okay, the concept is identical. Let's go finalize folks and notice how it selects the appropriate drive you know if you want to do the C first you can do the C or the E whatever and you simply go okay here now before we do this what is the whole process behind a head start restore? It is to get a head start to the restore and why am I doing this? Is it for disaster recovery purposes? Then I don't have to worry about anything else just do what I have to do. If it's because I'm using it for a migration process, what do I really need to do? Okay? And in a migration process, folks, what you should do is you take, and I've done this on hundreds of servers, this is my original physical machine. It's a guest running on Oracle, folks, you can see that, but I want to push it across the ESX. So I'm doing a migration. Agreed? Okay. What you should do is shut down all the services on this machine like SQL or Exchange or whatever and you take the last of the incrementals. So I'm going to go execute incremental and I'll give that half a second to get a bit of a head start and I'm going to go right click execute an incremental on the other one. Okay, VSS can handle that, just can't handle both of them at the same time but you know, four seconds apart, cool, it's fine. The C drive is already completed, okay? So I can see that here. It's up to incremental number five. The E drive is now done incremental number four. Wonderful stuff. Let's go file, exit. Let us go file. And this is what you should do if you're doing a migration, folks. Take the physical server that we were playing with, that we're migrating, and go shut the damn thing down. Put them. She's gone. Go away. Leave me alone. Well, will in a minute. Perfect. The physical machine has gone. The wherever it was, you know, where it was ever coming from. Now this is the beauty of Head Start Restore. How long is it going to take me to get this sucker up? Okay. So I just go finalize, and I'm going to pick the E drive, and I go that one. See how it says incremental numbers. I'm going to say that's the one I want. It's got the last of the data in it, so I go finalize at that point. Asks you the question, are you sure, are you, you know, of course we're sure. Okay. Now you'll notice that it's restoring, okay, some bits and pieces. So I'm going to also tick this, and the only one left I have to restore is the C drive. Eh? But because it's actually of restoring something on the C drive right now. I have to wait a, more, a second ago. Quite happy for just to sit for a sec while we wait. I'll just grab a quick drink, folks. Still restoring the C drive by the looks of it. Must be getting very close to it, surely to goodness. Yeah, it's got a bit to go. That's cool. Notice how I can do the E drive because it was restored. I've got to wait for the C drive restoration to finish before I can go and finalize it. See, if I click on here, it doesn't give me any data here. 
it's because it's in the process of restoring one before I can do anything. Okay, so I'm going to have to leave that alone, folks, for the moment. We'll go back over here, see what these two are up to. Okay, they're still restoring. Poor old Gateway Service probably really struggling by now, but you know. That's cool. All right, folks, while I am waiting for machines to sort of achieve a certain bit, I will answer a couple of questions in the meantime. So there are a couple of questions here, folks, so just bear with me for a second. Interesting question. What to do if the MS virtual server has two disks? One's a VHD and the other one's a VHDX. Can I HSR still? Should I do through volumes and select different volumes for both? Well, if either of those disks are less than two terabytes, create two Head Start Restore jobs in here and say this one's two, where are we? Sorry, this one. You notice here I created two Head Start Restore jobs on the same machine. This one is to a VHD and this one is to a volume. If both volumes that you're restoring to are less than two terabytes, I can pump one into a VHDX and the other one into a VHD. If one of them is over the two terabytes, then I would use the volume process, which is what I'm doing here. Yes? I'm restoring the C drive of my laptop to VHD and the G drive I'm restoring to a 4 terabyte disk that I could attach to this machine later on. Yes? Because in IPV I could just say, here's your other disk. And it goes, okay, that's cool. All right, so you could do that. The question here is, is the HSR support to push into ESX for OS volumes larger than 2 terabytes? In the later version of uh, ESX5, you could have larger volumes, you know, especially OS volumes larger than 2 terabyte. I struggle with the concept of that, but that's my personal problem. Um, we at this point in time don't support pushing into a VHDX larger than two terabytes. Okay, uh, it is coming. The support is coming. We do support version five, but some of the new features of version five um, we haven't quite caught up to yet. So it is coming. Okay. All right. Let me see how my poor old still restoring the C drive. Yeah, uh, understandable. I'm pushing quite a bit out of my out of my machine at the moment. So, folks, with your approval, just temporarily, we might pause these VHD ones because I don't intend to actually stand either of those two, but I do try intend to try and stand this one. Okay. So you can see here now the E drive is starting to restore its series of incrementals. Interesting. Doesn't like the load I've thrown on it by the looks of it, but that's okay.
Hmm. Bit of troubleshooting for us, folks. Let's see what the hell's going on here. Ah, uh, okay. I've run into that problem. Okay. Um, they're fine. You know, having problems, that's part and parcel of a webinar, folks. Part and parcel of dealing with it. You notice I tried to connect and then I gave up trying to connect and found out the service had stopped. Uh, folks, I am using the current release of Image Manager. We have found, and I'm not going to call it a bug, but something has changed with VMware that multiple calls to close off files and whatever else to the same machine will cause Image Manager to crash. In version 6.7, when it is released, which we expect in the next couple of months, um, that should have been rectified. You can see here this has actually failed. Okay. Oh, for God's sake. Gave it to you once. This is part and parcel of the problem. You know, that E drive one, I'm probably going to have to delete. I'll let the C drive re finish restoring, folks. It is a bug inside the system. So. Yeah, still restoring the C drive. So the E drive one at this point in time has failed. Uh, is there a way around it? Sure, restart it. Or we could use a recovery CD and go in there and pull the last of the files across if we wanted to. Okay. So it looks like I'm not going to be able to achieve that one for you this morning, folks. My bad. I did temporarily forget about that bug that exists in this particular version. Okay. But anyway, basically the the what the process, folks, is um, we pump them across. Um, we then go over to that particular machine. Okay. Boot it off with a recovery CD and basically just do a HIR hardware independent restore and just reboot the way the thing goes. Okay? Doesn't take normally that long. Um, but obviously today I forgot about that little bug and I do apologize. Uh, it's definitely getting closer to what it should be. I think the whole thing's sort of come to a bit of a grinding halt. But that's cool. Okay, we'll go back to these ones here. And you know, just start them off again. And they remember where they got up to because it's just local disk copies and away it goes. Okay? Um, I do apologise about that particular one. Um, it's my bad. Okay? If I was to have waited and if I'd have changed the agent settings here and I had left it at that I would have had the problem. It would have said, fine, you can't do this while I'm doing this. And it would not have had the issue. Okay? So I do apologise for that, folks. My bad completely. But all well and good. Let's cover off the basics again. VMDK. If you use an Image Manager 654 and when the new one comes out, Image Manager 67, that process, that failure process we just had won't happen folks. It's only on 6.6 that it happens and only if you've got agent settings set to do more than two at the same time. So VMDK we all understand, less than two terabyte obviously. Um, depending upon your ESX host as well, that is an issue. On some of the earlier fours um, you couldn't create anything larger than, I don't know, I think it was 250 odd meg, something like that. That's all right. Um, VHDs, obviously, 
uh, the earlier version of Microsoft. Okay, the fundamental difference that I want you to remember, it is 512 bytes. You cannot use VHDXs, which are 4K sectors. You cannot use that for a 2008 R2 and earlier machine. Okay, in 2012 R2, they call the uh, 2008 R2 machines legacy. Already they're called legacy. I'd hate to see what they call 2003 then, but anyway. But all three of those have a limitation of two terabytes on the appropriate machine. Okay, the VHD and VHDX definitely have a limit of two terabytes. The volume one is the one where we can use that process that which we showed you with this particular one here. Okay, and yeah, I've got it disabled at the moment, so. I might pause, no, that's the one that's actually still running, okay? So if I go across the gateway and I go to this one here, you can see the size of this disk. This disk will grow, folks, to about 360-odd gigs, so you, you can imagine I'm not going to sit here and wait for that for you, okay? But you can see the way I did the process, all right? Just clicked on here, volume, what volume, into there, into the R drive, and it just pushes it in. And then you just, you know, when the whole thing's basically finished, okay, so I'm just going to pause that, and I'm going to cancel into there, yes, and then I go back into computer management here, and I can basically go, you know, if you really want to do it properly, take the drive letter off it, just go remove, yes, takes the drive letter away from it, you then go and detach VHD. Okay, so it's gone. You then go over to here, and for example, we will assume that it was for this particular machine and it was whatever else. It's still attached to this machine. Okay, it wasn't being used at the point, so we've, we've created it. You then just fire off that machine and Bob's your uncle, everything's in place. Okay? So quite easy to achieve and quite an effective way of dealing with that two terabyte limit, which has been a problem for a little while, okay? Um, this C drive one, again, if I go back over here to Gateway, okay, I could create the new machine. I could point it down to this particular drive and create the appropriate bits and pieces I'm looking for, boot off a recovery CD, because my C drive off my laptop is UEFI, and because I've created a VHD, that means it's not, I can't use UEFI, so I will boot off a recovery CD and create a master boot record structure and a BCD to boot from the C drive. Very simple to achieve, okay? so. In a nutshell, folks, we will just cover it once more. We will just get rid of this one as well. Okay. New Head Start Restore job. ESX, when this process is being created, you do not have the vSphere console open. But ESX, obviously, okay, we can punch it through. Don't forget your lag time. Don't forget your volumes. Okay. Um, if I was to use these ones, they are UNC path basically for these two, VHD 2008 R2 and earlier, VHDX for 2012 and later, all right? And volume, we use volume to get around the two terabyte limit that is built into our system at this stage to go for four 16 terabyte volumes, okay? Just simply create the VHDX on the other machine, use computer management to mount it onto this machine, and just pump straight into it, folks. That's what it's all about. That's what's inside of, of computer management. Uh, not difficult to achieve. Um, just understand what it is you're trying to, trying to achieve with the whole process, okay? This poor old darling still restoring that C drive, so I'll leave it alone, okay? All right. Folks, um, 50 minutes in, 
I think I've covered all of it. It would have been nice to have seen this one actually boot for you folks, but, you know, it's fine. It works. My bad with the version of this, okay? If I was running 6.5.4 of this thing, it, it wouldn't have happened. In the newer version that we're working on at the moment, that issue has been fixed where this fails completely and you have no, no idea why, okay? It's failing because there's too many calls to a particular API over on that machine. That's why it fails. Uh, my bad. I didn't think about that this morning. I just thought I'd go through because I did three of these things yesterday in training for other people, but I only use single drives. <laughs> so, stupid on my behalf. Okay? But, that's cool. All right, folks, I think I have gone through just about all the bits and pieces associated with this, uh, all the differences, all the variances. You know, for the Microsoft guys, please remember VHD and VHDX, the difference. Okay? And once you do that, we're fine. Good grief. few more questions here, folks. I'll answer them. Ah, uh, yeah. I know exactly what's wrong. Is there a way of setting the disk ID as part of the HSR job in restoring to an MS cluster? Um, wrong word, sir. You're using disk ID. Um, you need to use the words of disk signature. Okay. Clusters in particular require the quorum to have a disk signature. Part and parcel of this restoring process sets the disk signature as it came out of the backups. For example, um, where am I in cloud that'll do me? We'll open this one up. Password. Okay. You can see in here a whole bunch of information. You can see computer name. You can see a whole bunch. See this? That's the disk signature in hexadecimal format that Windows is looking for. Okay? Um, as part and parcel of the HSR, it sticks that back. Okay? Using all these bits and pieces of information, all right, it sticks that all of that information back, okay? So, yes, that is dealt with. What is the current version of Shadow Protect and Image Manager and what's the best place to download it from when I did a course with you in the past? There was a specific location and version you recommended. Oh, Kadaki. Okay. We'll go there right now, folks. Um... Guess what? I was there yesterday. Now, if we go to Image Manager Installers, you will see the installers for the four version, the last of the fives, and the six series. The one that I currently recommend that people use is 654, unless you have a desperate need to use the ability to go to a... Uh, Ready NAS box directly, which 6.6 gives you the opportunity to use. There are still some bugs in that system. Um, I'm not going to say much more. I much prefer to use 6.5.4, but if I want to go to a Ready NAS or I want to use Shadow Stream 2, you must use version 6.6. 6.7 is on its way. Shadow Stream 2, as we referred to last week, um, is the newer replication technology. And the versions of uh, Shadow Protect that are available, okay, they're all the current versions. Um, I currently use the 514 version for customers' machines. The 515, the only difference between that and the one before it is stcvsm.sys is digitally signed by Microsoft. 5.2 has the feature to directly write to a, a Netgear ReadyNAS. 
one share per volume sort of structures that it will do and it puts them over there in in VHDX format which is not suitable for a Hyper-V machine and then 523 fixes some of the issues that were associated with that ready NAS stuff but if you're not using the ready NASs which uh, not a lot of people in Australia have actually taken it up yet um, I don't see a great uptake on that but you know that's my, not my call um, most people are still sitting on 514 because it's the one that works seamlessly and perfectly okay um, next one moving right on well, I have only got what version of image render do we need to go to um, sorry sir uh, you have only the ability to go to VHD then I would suggest you don't have 651 or 654 of image manager to get VHDX you need 654 or definitely to get VHDX and you also need 654 to get volume so if you can't get those other choices you got the wrong version of image manager and while I'm saying it get the 654 if you're not on it because 654 took us a long time to get released because we worked so damn hard on it for nearly 12 months to fix and improve the functionality of a lot of the bits and pieces okay a lot of things were tested a lot of things were you know here's a scenario it doesn't work can we fix it and we did 654 is the the minimum in my opinion that you should be on moving right on gentleman here is asking a question about can we see a machine boot using the HIR boot disk um, not today folks I do not have the time however I would like you to do something different for me do not ask the question of any of your account managers can we see a machine boot using the HIR boot disk ask the question we would really like to see UEFI secure boot on Hyper-V 2012 Gen 2 we would love to see that process okay and I'd love to show you that process because that covers off UEFI boot machines okay ask your account managers and if there's enough people asking for it I'll also throw the the question at the marketing people and say how about we do this one because a lot of people are starting to become very very interested in how the heck do we deal with UEFI boot machines okay I can't do it today sir but I'd love to do it for you it's easy actually once you've done it once you go oh okay never thought of that it's quite simple but you got to understand what you're trying to achieve I don't have time today to do that for you sir but um, definitely ask the account managers to push marketing for that and I would agree Ah uh, yes. Okay. This particular question somebody asked me is asking me, why do I have to have this closed if I set up a job in here? Okay? Because we won't allow a second connection from the same machine. If somebody else has got the vSphere center open, we don't really care. Uh, can I show you what I mean? Okay. as you can see I already have the ESX machine over here you know, set up and I have my vSphere console open agreed uh, we'll open that back up and I'm gonna go here and I'm going to go for a new head start restore job okay VMDK I am going to go to network drive no you idiot ESX pick the machine head start restore volumes okay and select the password images and I'll go and we'll go OK and it says click to browse there's the error you will get image manager cannot browse the selected ESX destination because the client is currently running please close that client 
and it's just purely and simply the way these two applications try to talk to the same API and the ESX says, you can't do this, I will not let you do that. And you go, okay. And we go, click the browse and off we go. Okay? And it just deals with it at that point. And we just browse across there and set it all up the way we had it set up before. Yes? So I'm just going to cancel out of this, obviously, folks, because... Okay. I uh, thank you very much for that comment. <laughs> um, question's just been asked of me. Where can I download 514 for MSP? You can't. In MSP, you've got to use the current version, which is on the MSP portal. Um, purely and simply that at the moment is 523. Um, 523 for 99.99% of machines, fine. Okay, I just don't see the advantage of upgrading if I'm not getting any specific advantages in my particular machines. Okay, you know, the two advantages that we're talking about is, is dealing with um, um, pushing to a, a, a ready NAS. Um, I, I don't push to ready NASs at all, so I didn't bother going past 514. Okay. How do I find which version of Image Muncher I am using? Uh, you've got two choices here, folks. You can either click on this one and go about, and it tells me I'm running 6.6. The second one is go to Agent Settings and about, and it tells me 6.6. Okay. All right. Gentlemen, folks, thank you very, very much for your um, time today. I certainly hope you've got something out of this to uh, assist you with what you're trying to achieve and I hope that the explanations in particular around the different types of places to restore to is of great benefit to you. Again I will mention VHDX is 4K sectors, VHD is 512 byte sectors. Fundamental difference for me, the rest of it is just dressing. I'm more concerned about the technical stuff, okay? So at that point, folks, I'm going to say thank you for your time. Please enjoy um, the rest of your day. Have a great weekend, and I'll see those who are interested in whatever it is I'm doing next Friday. Have a good day. Thank you. Goodbye.